cripple. Always end up on welfare. I'll electrocute them all. Balance a goddamn bunch. Somewhere on audio, Jack Edwards is the worst fucking announcer in sports. The worst. Silver bullet, right? Yes. Silver bullet. All right. Oh, I didn't write down the date. When did this one come out? Are you going to plug? What's the theme going to be I for don't this? Like die. a silver bullet commercial for Coors Light or something? Um, I was going to make a joke about that, and you totally killed it. I'll cut it. Uh... And make it look like I came up with it first. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Just Another Horror Podcast. I'm John. Hello. I'm Hello. Ben. Hello. <laughs> I'm Cobra. And uh, we're reviewing Silver Bullet today. With our continuation of Stephen King Month. Why did we choose this month for Stephen King Month? Because we haven't done it for a long oh, time. Oh, okay. I just wondered if there was a reason. No. But we've done a bunch of Stephen King. We've done Stephen King movies. How many? I just did this last night. I think it's four. Was I a part of any of these? It, Five total. The Shining. I wasn't part of it. Oh, The Shining. Creep Show. I wasn't a part of Creep Show. Two. One and two. I and was there's not one more. Yeah. The Mist. Yeah. Oh, that was my first. Uh, yep. That was my first episode, people. The okay. Mist. That's when White Gold Wes Abandoned. bailed. His wife made him. You need to be home. All the time? So I can go out for girls' night. Ugh. Um. <laughs> wow, threw John off. He's yeah. Off. <laughs> you guys gave me a left one. Silver for Bullet. Right. Silver Bullet. Um, you already made this joke, but I didn't know what this movie was about. I didn't think it was about uh, one of those little... I didn't think it was about a wheelchair. A vibrator. <laughs> I didn't think it was about a wheelchair. I thought it was about uh, this a vibrator. Coors Light. Never uh, mind. Fucking. Isn't there a vibrator called the Silver Bullet? Okay. Yes. Yesterday, before work, I wake up at five. Oh no. And the power went out twice. Yeah, we had power issues the other night. And... Jesus Christ! <laughs> it finally happened. <laughs> oh. Uh. I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, get up there and read tape, and, and we, we can, should uh, be good for another two hours. You can keep replaying it at work, like Costanza. Be like, what's this sound like? There's a clunk. <laughs> a metallic clunk. We'll just roll with this one. It's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, that's seem... lazy. Let's put it back up. No, I'm not moving. <laughs> the furniture. vote is tied at one. I'm not moving furniture. <laughs> It's a microphone to sound better. You're not uh, willing to do that for the seven fans we have? No. John, you were saying... <laughs> no. You heard no, it first. Cobra. Ben hates the fans. <laughs> Cobra was saying you woke up at four in the morning, five in the morning. And there was... I don't know what channel it was on. Silver but... Bullet was on? No. <laughs> Pleasure Toys. It was like... This lady's <laughs> on there and she... And she's whoa, like, whoa, whoa. What do you call them? Pleasure toys? <laughs> well, I didn't want to just come out and say there were some dodos, there were some penis rings, there were like all these things, and she's like, check out number X473 in our exhibit, and it's both good for men and women. Men? Silver bullets? Not the, it wasn't <laughs> just silver bullets, there were like penis rings, and with clit ticklers, and all sorts <laughs> of shit. Uh, yeah, I woke up we right, I was like, what the fuck? fuck is on my TV right now? It's... I don't think you can pull this back onto the road. <laughs> nope, so it's gone. gone. We it's have gone. skidded off into... <laughs> we need a whole line of merchandise of your... On t-shirts. Just what you call things. Cobra Pleasure stars. toys. <laughs> Pleasure toys. What else do you... Oh, the click to... Or the, uh... The... <laughs> Wait, like, you might be a cobra if you say... What? <laughs> 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 oh, think talk. Uh, oh, right, Think Talk, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's steer it back on. And we have, do we have Think Talk in this movie? Silver Bullet. So in this what, one? We have narration. We have narration. Yeah. I liked it. I, I forgot didn't. about halfway through I that didn't. girl was narrating. She wasn't important to the story very no, much. No, and, and they never like, explained what happened to Marty, important. that she's doing the narration. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to tell you. The sister is very important because she was the turning point in the movie. If she didn't go to Red... Because Red did not believe Marty at that point. If another person didn't come forward and tell Red, we couldn't set the whole thing in motion. That's stretching. It's not. 
because she realized that when she was Marty told her what he did, he shot it through the eye. So she checked everybody in that neighborhood. But I think somebody at some point would have noticed that he had a messed up eye. But Red. But no one knows I that Corey Haim shot a firecracker. Corey Haim does, and he goes and he goes but there every Sunday. Red wasn't Red wasn't convinced. But nobody believes Corey Haim because he's an eleven and he's a cripple. Nobody believes in him because he's a cripple. No, except Red. Said? His mom doesn't. That's the message of the movie. No one uh, believes in him. Except Red. Red. Red came around when he saw um, the damage that was done to the wheelchair that belches smoke and probably stinks. But uh, he saw the damage on there, and then he saw the Reverend's car. Or no, that was the sheriff, wasn't it? Never mind. Red still is No, concerned. Red saw Red it and then told the yet. sheriff. Yeah, yeah. That's so he was convinced then. We're way ahead. Yeah. Nobody even knows what's happening yet. So the guy from Major League is in there. How would you like to manage the Indians this year? I don't know. It's the spring in 1976, in case we were wondering. Yeah, this is... Carrie just murdered her whole class. <laughs> yep. And now we're in the Silver War. Yeah. Daniel Atai Ateus? Oh, is that the director? That's the director. I don't know it who that is. It should have been. I would love to have seen what, um, what's his face would have done. The guy who directed Stanley Phantasm. Stanley Cooper. Um, I'm on, uh, flipping oh. my mind right now. Fuck. The guy who also directed Bubba Hotep. Yes. I he don't was, remember. He was on board to direct this and then something happened. And... Does this score sound to you like Friday the 13th 5? The, were we talking about the intro music? No, a lot of Because the... that sounded like a Disney film to me. No, yeah. This... A lot of the uh, sounds when the wolf is stalking people, it sounds like Friday the 13th. Is it Harry Mavardini? I don't know. It's just very similar. What year did these both come out? 85. That would have been around the same time. I think they're borrowing a little bit. (laughs) Um, Do they let drunks like this work on the railroad? Back in the 70s, yes. I guess maybe. Chronic drunk. I can't imagine he did much. What was he doing? I don't know. He was digging holes. He was looking for beer and digging holes. That's it. I was expecting somebody to come out and help him. I think he was talking to his shovel. Oh, yeah. imaginary friend. <laughs> yeah. What? Not imaginary, <laughs> it's an object. He sees the uh, the wolf prints in the dirt and goes, holy shit. Why? Wouldn't you just go, what the hell is that? You just what if the town's known for werewolves? Well, it might have been because uh, Corey Haim's character immediately goes to a werewolf is killing people. Yep. <laughs> for and... no reason. And whatsoever. The bullet maker is like, yeah. I know what you'd use that I for. I like that scene. Like a wear- yeah. Yeah, that was a good scene. Um, do community picnics like this happen? Or only in movies? Only in Stephen King books. No, nah, this is like a thing with all movies. But No, I bet they do in maybe and they, bigger <laughs> towns in the Midwest. They call the... Be- uh, yeah, look, they fucking, I one. know you did last summer. They missed Tuna. Oh, yeah, they did. Is there, really, or what? <laughs> is there only one religion in this town? That There's only one church, which means people haven't gotten mad at each other yet. So, yeah, I'm ripping on church again. Here I go. Here you go, you atheist. <laughs> the girl's name is Jane. She's walk. Is it Jane? Jane. I don't yes. know. down. Jane. Okay, uh, she's walking and Brady and... He's a little fucker. Marty. He's only in it for one scene and then he's murdered. Spoiler alert! Two scenes. He's I'm in it for sorry, this scene. Sorry, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> he's in it for this scene and then the kite flying scene. Okay. Which he's really into kite flying. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not leaving. For someone who, <laughs> for someone who throws like snakes at girls and tries to scare girls and shit like that, for him to also be like kite flying! <laughs> oh my god! It's a little weird. Okay. S- Marty's so, a booger. Well, I have. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Janie, they make Janie fall in a mud puddle, or Brady does, anyways. Mm. She goes into the bushes to take her pantyhose off. Mm. Not sure why. She overhears a conversation. Well, it ain't my baby. Yes, I told you, babe. It ain't my baby. And don't you ever drag Please me don't off say like that. that. Again. You know it's your baby. Look, you know we had this conversation before. Sorry, babe. I have to have some help, but it's I don't your oven, but it ain't my bun. You got bacon in there, huh? Uh, See you. Later. You have to help me. Remember the good times. <laughs> What the hell? That what? is class. What the hell is happening? So, obviously, she, she's just got pregnant out of wedlock. What uh, uh, What was that Kevin Bacon movie where he's dancing in town? Footloose. What Footloose town is this where she's going to be banished? Well, their preacher is the guy who runs the picnic. That's the kind of town it is. 
This is true. Okay, so apparently the brother is favored by the parents, like oh, extremely horribly. favored. Yeah. And uh, we hear about Uncle Red. Chair. We hear about Uncle Red for the first time. He's a divorced drunk. For the at fourth least time? Fourth or at least yeah. third. Um, the word cripple is thrown around like. Like it's 1985. Yeah. So, I don't think you know what. Can I have a minute? Yep. All right. I don't think that uh, cripple is an offensive word. I, I think had one at in front some of me point getting coffee this morning. Yeah, I, I like, think at some point they it. just were like, let's change it to something else. What is it now? Physically handicapped, right? I don't know what it is now. Or physically disabled. It sounds like a machine that just like yeah broke or something. You know what? Listen to um, George Carlin. He does a much better bit on this <laughs> than I could ever do. Are you stealing his, stealing his spiel? I think I might have been uh, horribly misquoted. So, him. Jane, Janie is basically, yeah, you said, told, like, the parents favor Marty. Every complaint but that yet, she has, they're like, I'm going to hit the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> but then I feel like they, like, Janie's the one who takes care of Marty. This is a Stephen King trope throughout a couple different stories, and one in the next movie even, where a child is left to care for a physically disabled, is that what you said? No, it's a yeah. crippled. <laughs> That next movie is way Yeah, worse. it's way worse, but there's another short story, too, where um, somebody's left home with, like, a old grandmother who dies or something like that. But, um, yeah, uh, it's a very... Is Stephen King, King a good trope. writer, or is he just one good idea repeated? I think he's both. I think if you read certain stories, I think he phones it in for the, some of the stories, and then other ones I think, like, he's fantastic if you read the more character-driven Steve, well, he uh, loves to describe every character of every movie, You know my he? complaint with them. Huh. They're in very important parts. He briefs it up, and they're in things that don't give a shit. He describes the fuck out of things. Yeah, That's true. Those are where... I think he has, like... Uh, what's that called? Uh, where you can't think of anything. Cocaine right? brain. Cocaine <laughs> brain. <laughs> well, That's for perfect. a while, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's uh, Writer's block. But he has it, like, in reverse sometimes where he can't stop writing. And it just adds way too much. Get the uh, pregnant the woman. The woman. She's, she's going to take some suicide? pills. Oh, I have to, trying to kill baby, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So no, just herself. The the wolf. The baby. Oh baby. nope, self. The, <laughs> wow. She's on the second floor. I'm assuming she lives with her mom. Mm. How does it? So the werewolf goes way out of its way to kill her mm. to find a victim. Did. Do you know why though? It, okay, so because he knew she was pregnant. The as a, was... as the as the. No, the priest. He was saving her soul from suicide. Well, he says that. Yeah. So obviously he knew she was well, I pregnant. Him. I don't even think he's full of shit. How did he know? No, I don't but know. That has it, nothing is to do Catholic? with her. Is this Catholic? Like he's got the collar. I assume, but then we heard Reverend. Well, maybe she mm-hmm. went to confession and said, "I've sinned. I'm pregnant," and he knew it. So when he turns into the wolf, he's he still knows. Yeah, but he kills her to save her. He says. Are you gonna victim blame? No. Like our co-host John. Wait. Makes the victim blame? You should do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who am I victim blaming? Uh, no, the I, priest? You're saying that... Okay, what am I... You're saying that the girl who tried to kill herself was being saved by the priest. Yeah, because she was going to commit because suicide. Because she was yeah. wrong in, in his eyes. In his eyes, he's saving her by killing her. Way to go, religion. Let her You're so smart. <laughs> but she was going to kill herself anyway, so... In his eyes, he sent her to heaven per se than hell wouldn't god be like i know what you were gonna do asshole and send you to hell maybe no what you got lucky that that werewolf broke into your room also could that trestle hold a werewolf (laughs) no nobody knows the rules of god (laughs) which is a problem (laughs) except jeebus jeebus ain't talking (laughs) we go to the bar and this is where cobra and i both uh, we were texting, and we both got a Halloween 4 vibe from this town. So did I. Yeah. I Just, down, yeah. They're the rednecks ready to go out and find kill whoever's and, killing. And accidentally kill Ted Halls. Oh, uh, um, he says something about he couldn't find his ass if you stuffed uranium in it and looked in a Geiger counter. Yeah. <laughs> But now he just sits at home with his ass up his ass. I do like uh, how that guy gets called out later because he's we pay your taxes and one guy goes <laughs> you haven't you paid your taxes <laughs> aren't you behind and I was like yes. <laughs> um, so we get uh, Andy, he's pissed and well, yelling. We, yeah, we get a look at the locals, uh, the local beer bellies. 
trying to form a... They don't call it a lynch mob, but he calls it private justice. Is that it? Mm-hmm. I don't think they're doing that yet. I think this guy's just pissed, right? The, this the, guy's pissed on his own, and this the, is when we cut to the motorized wheelchair. Silver bullet. <laughs> yeah. The chair. Is this where he's walking... Or he's... Uh, the girl's on the bike. He's taking her home. Marty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we meet her drunk father, who's going, Tammy! Damn, Damn cripple always <laughs> always end up on welfare. It reminded me of South Park though with the Tammy. Because <laughs> her name is Tammy, but he's calling her Tammy. <laughs> Do you know who that guy is? Uh, he looks like Harold from Friday Part Three. He is Wooly from Dawn of the Dead. Ah, the guy drops down and. From Dawn of the Dead? Dawn of the That's Dead. That's when he's like just shooting everything. Yeah, he's yeah. the racist guy. He's yeah, like, yeah, Puerto yeah. Ricans! And he's just busting down <laughs> doors <laughs> and shooting. Yeah. Oh, okay. He gets killed by um, Ken Foray. Shoots. Yep. Yeah, because he gets bit in the leg. The no, guy... he doesn't get bit. Oh, he shoots him because he's killing all of these innocent people because they're Puerto Ricans. <laughs> no, yeah, but... Well, they're... Black based for her. They're white people. <laughs> Come on. That's... <laughs> he did it, I guess. Yeah, it's some really bad shoe polish. Ties were tough and the budget was Ooh. low, but we got black shoe polish. Yeah, that was rough. Uh, but yeah, it reminded me of um, uh, what's his name in South Park in the wheelchair? Timmy. Oh, yeah. yeah Timmy. I will plug. I will plug Timmy. No problem. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Who is the gas station guy? I don't know, but... I've seen him before. Yeah, he had a familiar face. Was he making fun? He was making fun. He <laughs> was. He was like... Check the oil, check the yeah. gas. And then no. Was, well, yes, he was, it was. He was being he was, very friendly to a I kid that mm. is a criminal. He was making fun of him, but like to Corey Haim's knowledge. Like, yeah, Corey he could, he said, knew every... Can yes. I look for the smartass? And Corey Haim was laughing. Like, yeah, it was... I feel like they get along. I do, too. Yeah. I feel like it was a quirky it's joke to a criminal It's just innocent ribbing. Kid. He's not like... Oh, you got no legs! Yeah, it wasn't like (laughs) the dickhead from Cabin in the Woods who spit that chew on that woman's foot. Uh, Corey gets home. uh, Corey Hank. Oh, God, Corey. Uh, Marty gets home. That's okay. You can call him Corey Hank. How do we feel about Corey? I love Corey Hank. He's good in this. He's good in everything. We had a reference to... uh, we say everything. I might have stepped out on a limb. That's breaking <laughs> at this point. He's good to at least four things. Um, no, I feel bad for him just because of... Because he's dead? No, everything that's come out about child Yeah, so now so. when you watch his movies, you're like, oh... Yeah, he was being yeah, like He was touching him this time. Yeah. Dino De Laurentiis, for sure, in this <laughs> instance. Ew, was it? Probably. Is it because he's French? Or... I mean, is he French? You guys were looking at me for, like... I'm like... Why was Dino touching? I'm like, I don't think he was. <laughs> was he? Or nobody knows. Um, you like that? Dead Dino De Laurentiis? I'm calling you out, you pedophile that might not be a pedophile at all. If we get introduction of uh, Gary Busey. Look, I don't know what you're doing here. What I'm doing is, is I live here now. I live here with Julie. I think you should go. Neil. You can't play movies on a seashell. <laughs> you can't even plug them in. Goddamn Christmas! How... <laughs> You don't. I see that you're... I think, Sorry. Yeah, your toilet. Your you toilet. Gotta, dude, outside decorations... ho, ho, ho. Your outside decorations... What's going on with that? My wife loves Christmas? That's not going to fly. It's March. I know. So, <laughs> That's lazy. I was going to comment on that. <laughs> like, I, I understand when you leave outside decorations up all winter because it's so cold. You don't want to take it down, but it's, right. it's your bathroom. Dude. The bathroom is very cold, and I don't want to go in put there. Put something green for St. Patrick's Day or something pastel for Easter. Just give or just the don't put bag. something on there because it's a fucking toilet and it doesn't need it. So. That's fine. It's not my choice. <laughs> Just, do you want to plug... But don't glamorize Christmas and nothing don't else. Don't glamorize... Don't objectify Christmas. The bartender says, Oh, he all, he all, he always called me that. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, that joke. Full so I, in, oh, that's way long I, I like beer rather than liquor, so I'm not sure exactly how large of a bottle that wild turkey was, but he is just carrying it around. He's like hammering he's, it. He's just, just hammering it. it. And he disses on several MLB fan franchises. And I am not amused. Well, they're playing yeah. poker. <laughs> is that what they're betting on? Is I yeah. call Baseball it. Baseball franchises. Yeah. 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 Um, we get a slightly racist line here. Don't stand a Chinaman's chance. Yeah. Uh, I don't care. This is It's class... Gary Busey. What do you expect to come out of his mouth? <laughs> I heard he ad-libbed a bunch of... I imagine. Yeah. I imagine the <laughs> hee-haw joke also. 
That's the best joke I've heard. Does in a he long look time. like Phil the Thrill to you? Yeah. A little bit like Phil Kessel. Kessel's got some hair this year. Yeah. Um, Busey's playing the classic drunk guy though, who is a complete and utter drunk, but he's a good uncle. A good. He seems like a good uncle. He, like he yeah. sticks up for Corey. Or Corey. Oh my god, I called him that again. He sticks up for Marty. Uh, says like, you know, he's only handicapped because you say he's handicapped. Yeah, he's yeah. The mom treats him like a cripple, and Gary Busey's like saying, "Hey, he can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. His handicap's not gonna hold him back." Well, obviously not, because uh, when when Marty is being put into the chair to go up upstairs to bed, uh, he clearly pushes off with his legs. He, <laughs> when he climbs down the what do you call it? That actually thing? wasn't bad. I didn't think. Oh, the the like thing outside trestle. the window. Yeah. 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 He climbs down that thing and then he gets into the. He was much better there than he was. I don't know. Was... There were parts of that when he was getting into the wheelchair that he could clearly. But he see was how thing. old here? Like that's not bad for that's him. Asking a excuse. kid to pretend your legs don't work. Yeah, right. it's, it's hard to do. Um, um, I couldn't do it, and I'm 32. My legs are jello. All right, there. It's not that hard. You gave me enough alcohol, I could probably do it. Uh, that's not it. So we're getting to the uh, the guy the the. the Guy Wally. who doesn't like welfare cripples. Yeah. Uh, he's, watching, watching, he's watching wrestling. Some wrestling. He's who are like, your five top five favorite wrestlers, Cobra? Can I can I give an honorable mention first? One. 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 Oh, I've got, I know you wrote down like twenty three. <laughs> I've got so many. I've got reasons. Do I give my top five now? Yeah. Go ahead. All of them. All of them. Oh my god. Because we're gonna not take up the whole show with wrestling. <laughs> no, you do five and then just. Just sprinkle, yeah. Throughout the number five season. is Arn Anderson because he's the most technical wrestler. Number four is Mr. Perfect because the perfect plex. Number three is a tie between the Ultimate Warrior and Shawn Michaels. One because the Ultimate Warrior was my favorite when I was little, and two you sound because like you're doing a book report. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, <laughs> Shawn Michaels, finisher and theme music are my favorite. I'm just a sexy boy. Number two is Ric Flair because the turnbuckle flip and the woo. The woo is the best. And number one is Stone Cold because at the height of wrestling, he was my favorite and I owned four of his t-shirts. Honorable mentions. Val Venus, the Million Dollar Man, Macho Man, Honky Tonk Man, Owen Hart, Degeneration X, NWO, Red, Razor Ramon, Diesel, Juventud Guerrero, Lex Luger, Big Van Vader, <laughs> Junkyard Dog, and Earthquake. All right. You have five, Ben. I can come up with five. Just do it fast. <laughs> Don't list everybody in the WWF. Uh, I have a bigger list. Oh, I figured. <laughs> uh, number five, Ricky the Dragon Boat. My least favorite wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four. Can I just say the four horsemen? Because yeah. I used to walk around as a kid. <laughs> I had two of the four horsemen on my uh, list. You can definitely say Three. Them. I liked, uh, let's go with King Kong Bundy. <laughs> Number two, I'll do a tag team, the Road Warriors. Oh, shit. And Legion of Doom? No, yeah, the Legion of Doom. The Road Warriors. Talk Weren't they called the Road Warriors? They were the Road, yeah. And uh, my number one, uh, Razor Ramon. Because I used to always think that the Razor's Edge was <laughs> devastating, but if you look at it now, it's not really that devastating. It's awesome. They would just build it up and he would just drop the guy. <laughs> Uh, number five for me is Andy Kaufman. Oh my God. <laughs> number four is the Ultimate Warrior. Number three is uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Number two is Dink the Clown. <laughs> I saw him wrestle at Butler Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I like you couldn't get that out without laughing. Dink and Doink were there. Oh, oh no. Doink was the rest of Dink was the midget. Oh, well, Doink, it, yeah, it doesn't Doink matter. The... <laughs> I don't care. Uh, number one, the cream always rises to the top. Macho Man, Randy Savage. <laughs> and Miss Elizabeth. Macho Man's good. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! Will you marry me? So the, That guy goes out to the greenhouse. So is this guy a farmer? What's he do? Is he he runs a greenhouse. He sells flowers. This that guy just does, does not yeah. seem like I don't he's think got he has the thumb. temperament for flowers. No. no. <laughs> what what beers he drinking? They look like red stripe bottles, but 
Didn't uh, Budweiser and Chip Beer came in those yeah, bottles? Yeah, they back were. Then? I looked. They weren't red stripe because I tried to look. Okay. I couldn't read what it was though. There was a Budweiser sign in this movie, so that's probably at least the same distributor. So, question here: mm. uh, Cor- uh, Corey Haim's character brings Tama home. Mm. She tells Marty that There's she's heard growling and noises in the greenhouse at night. Mm. And this is where this guy's going to die. Are you telling me that the werewolf is purposely knocking clay pots over <laughs> just to be a dick? Yeah, I mean... What's he doing out there? There's no... He's it's trying not to like lure he's out raiding. Wooly. But he went through the top floor window to kill somebody. Why is he trying to lure somebody out? Like, what's he doing in this greenhouse? He knows that Wooly's a dick and a sexual predator, so he's going to kill him. That could be. He doesn't always kill for good. Sometimes he kills for bad good. Uh, for bad good. I see where you're <laughs> right. Are you trying to tell me that the werewolf is actually a good guy and he's ridding this town? Yes. I'm at the not going to buy this at, at all. At the very end of the... He talks about how he cannot control himself and he can't do it. He changes with the yeah. moon. He doesn't... This is a curse that was put <laughs> upon maybe him. maybe that note that he got that said kill yourself should be what he does. Even he though, can. He's not allowed to kill himself. But he can maybe accidentally fall asleep on the train tracks in his car. Yeah. He can't. So why can't... Because the guy was a chronic drunk, the, the railroad worker, and that's why I, he killed him? I have a suspicion that he might have touched his daughter maybe once or twice <laughs> or feet. Is everybody in this town wow. just touching kids? Yeah. No, but this what? guy is. Did you not hear him? He's like, come here, Tammy, Timmy. Don't We're talking about the guy oh, at the beginning. the railroad guy. You yeah, that's brought right. up some story that he was touching his yeah. kid, and that's I was like, no, no, no. Everybody in town is touching kids. <laughs> not that guy. I was like, how did you come up with that conclusion? I don't but, know why he killed that guy. Just to start the movie off hot. So... That's it. He's like, you, you're you're done. You gotta be dead. You're an easy dick to marry with you. When he's watching wrestling. <laughs> oh, that hurts my parts. <laughs> <laughs> the werewolf busting through the bottom of the floor. It's cool. Yeah, that whole thing looked cool. Yeah, some shots are good in this movie. I don't think the transformations are great, but they aren't as bad as people say they are. Some in the but... church look terrible, and some look all right. Yeah. Uh, spider jump scare. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> So after this he kill, looks annoyed that he had to do that too. He's like, oh. <laughs> so after this uh, kill, a curfew's enacted. So at 5 p.m., everyone has to be off the streets. Mm-hmm. But I love the shot of you get a station wagon hauling like a trailer full of possession, headed out of town, and we get. Is this the public radio that we're listening to? It must the be. Town? Like, Don't leave. Yeah. Stay here in town. <laughs> the whole town's deserted. Uh, so Brady's dead. Oh, yeah. Why is Marty the one climbing up a tree? How did well, Marty climb up this tree? Upper body strength. I get it, but like this was five feet up from the wheelchair. Well, this is why Brady deserves to die. I think he's a prick. Yeah, he is. And they they take kite flying very, very seriously. I didn't know that the priest was the werewolf. Can you plug... But I started getting you an idea Mary that Poppins? he might be. Is this the first time watching this? Yeah. Can you oh, plug really? Mary yep. Poppins before you talk about the kite? Why scene? am I plugging Mary yeah. Poppins? Let's go fly a kite. What? <laughs> You're not allowed to talk for Mary Poppins! <laughs> Let's go fly a kite. Sorry, I'm not familiar you with Mary Poppins. You can plug that right before we talk about it, and then they'll know that we're talking about it. <laughs> All right. Because otherwise they won't. So... Marty goes home for dinner and he has a lingering look on Brady as if we all know what's going to happen to Brady. <laughs> yep. Uh, back to the bar, who Ambrose Burnside. Oh fuck, man! With the yeah, sideburns, uh, is rallying the troops up. Well, first, what's his, the dad comes in and says, "Have you seen my kid?" Yeah, Andy. Oh wait, no, Andy is the guy who probably owns the local. Uh, Army surplus store, mm-hmm. the survivalist looking guy. Uh, I have here he has really bad analogies because he's the one who did the Geiger counter thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then he had another analogy. I didn't write it down, but I just have a really bad analogy. Um, the cop, the fat cop gets yelled at for doing nothing. Okay, there's been a bunch of murders in town, and the cop is at the bar playing pool. Drinking. So I am completely on this guy's side on this I'm one. I'm going to say the guy's off duty. There's are only we, two cops. Are we he's there, not off yeah. duty. He should be where? Like, which. Mm. Scene well, are you talking about? There, the it, it's the second bar scene, and Andy, yeah. the guy with the sideburns, who's rallying everybody to go out and vigilante. Keeps making fun of the fat cop. For discussing the murders. Red thinks it's a psychopath who's influenced by a full moon. 
Which seems logical. Marty says, what if it's a monster, specifically a werewolf? They could have thrown one more line by Marty saying, well, the murders are only occurring in full moons. Because how are we supposed to... (laughs) But I think they mentioned later that it's not happening only on full moons. No, it seems like it's happening like days, up to days, or a day or two after a full moon. Mm -hmm. But the moon is most full. But the he most, gets stronger. He gets stronger on a full moon, but I just didn't know how Marty came to this conclusion. Did he immediately came up with it? That it's a werewolf. I understand. It's a. Uh, he just has that vibe. Remember it's more of a, about his brother being a vampire, and two years later, so. It's more of a young adult horror film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, is this rated R? I think it is. I think it is. Actually. I don't know why it's rated R. They might slip a fuck in, maybe. I don't know. We see, like, when the woman is attacked and, um... There's a decapitation to start the movie. Yeah, decapitation to start. Oh, yeah, that guy gets his head ripped off. Uh, And then the girl gets, like, she gets pretty slashed up, big scratches. Mm. Again, very, uh... Very... On her back. Very Nightmare on Elm Street. There's some blood in this. I mean... A little bit. Okay, so we have the Haddonfield Army. That's where I have it written down. Yes. Militia, I have. (laughs) I have here, uh, again, Andy with his yelling, or, uh, insulting the the chubby deputy mm-hmm. calls him that fat shit bag beside you. There's some really good swearing in this movie. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's part of the R. <laughs> this is really weird when they go out searching for the woods though, and that fog keeps. I like the fog. Yeah. Where these people? First, okay, so. The, werewolf, the, werewolf. the fat shit bag tells Andy to shut up, or somebody does. Mm. Brady's father is Herb. also at the bar. Herb says he gives a yes speech. to the lynch mob. Yep. So, Brady's father's at the bar. He tells him, yes, Andy, shut up. Mm-hmm. Then agrees with Andy to yeah, incite the mob. I got confused by that. I'm like, did I hear that wrong? Okay. Because I, mm-hmm. I thought he's against Andy. Because I have written down, no. Herb says no lynch mob, and then I crossed it out and said, yes, lynch mob. Yeah, yeah he changes his mind. Mm-hmm. So This is when I first realized it was probably the Reverend. Uh, okay. When he was running from car to car, car, saying, car to car, don't go. And they really lingered on it. So everybody's out in the bog. I like the shot. And I like Ted, to call it a I hope Ted Hollister is not walking through the bog. Oh, this is all swamp thing, though. Mm. People getting pulled under the... Look at all the horror references you guys are dropping right now. <laughs> Ted Hollister and swamp thing. And... Um, Someone's about to make lemonade the in bog. their pants. The bog. Oh, yeah, that movie was... by John Carpenter. Uh, Bear Trap? Oh. Was that just randomly? Were they trying to I catch didn't... something, or was that trap just out there? I don't know, but fuck, man. Oh, it's got to hurt. And then... Uh, Put it on twice. He gets it half pulled off. And then he lets it go. He lets it go and just... It's like uh, if you ever get your... Accidentally get your finger caught in a mouse trap or something. I have... I'm proud of how diverse this town is, but I am not proud that a black character dies first. Oh, yeah, I have that. <laughs> Brother goes first. And then, uh, then the werewolf gets a hold of somebody and beats him with a piece of wood that's the bartender oh, the, who we bat. saw okay. that's his weapon with the of peace choice because uh-huh. uh, he makes peace in his bar when drunks get out of hand and once again i'm like werewolves either choke people or hit them on the head with bats well, uh, this is uh, if you think about it the uh, the original wolfman he didn't really bite anybody he, was, choked, he choked everyone people, yeah. yeah so i don't know if they're kind of throwing a reference back but then didn't he like bite the woman I don't and think And slash so. her up. And, he's definitely slashed her. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, he's choking and he takes him. And that was really bad with the... Yeah, you could tell bad. the cats were... It was like on a... <laughs> it was bad. But that's Lawrence Tierney, though, who... I love grum, grumbly old white men. I like grumpy old men and grumpy old men. <laughs> so, now we go to a funeral scene. Yeah, this... I was fooled. More funerals. I thought this was real... Priest has a werewolf Well, I was dream. confused because the dad, Herb, died in the swamp. And then I saw him at uh, this funeral, and I'm like... So what I actually wrote down was, Dad's dead. And then when we got to the funeral, I went back and crossed it off. But he is dead. It's a nightmare. Well, uh, I was... A werewolf the, nightmare. Mm-hmm. The reverend is having... A, the priest is having a nightmare. And he's trying to calm everybody's fears. And I'm like, there are a lot of stink guys being... They just keep... Yeah, why are they so pissed at him? But yeah. then it's like, oh shit, it's a dream sequence. Mm-hmm. I was like, shit, you did, you, you fooled me. So that, being that that's the first time that like another character thought of werewolves in the movie, that's when I'm like, he's the werewolf. He has to be. You're so smart. Well, he no, says, uh, what's he say I, when he comes I'm out? Sure, of his you dream? should have seen it before that, but he says something. Uh, How would you know before that? 
when he's trying to stop people from leaving. Shit like that. Don't you eat that? Probably a little bit. Jane's parents are assholes. Yeah, they are. The mom, for sure. Uh-huh. So, they drove the whole kids down to the park. They're the only car there. Mm-hmm. And they read a sign that says... No uh, fireworks. No fireworks. It reminded me of uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. And he drives them all the way across. Wally World. Wally World. Wally World. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, really? Like, no one's... T- it wasn't word of mouth that they were canceling fireworks. That they we were took the whole, first ones there. They took the whole family down. Um, Marty's devastated, apparently, fireworks... They were important to him. Big deal with kids in the 80s. So so they go back to the house. They're having like a barbecue. Red's there. Mm. And Marty's complaining to Red. Red's fixing the garage door at this time. And so out of order, Marty's complaints about these killings. First up, Brady's killed. Canceled the fair. They canceled fireworks. Like, shouldn't Brady being killed, like... Be ahead of that? <laughs> you would think, right? It was just kind of funny. Uncle Red also says he feels like a virgin on prom night somewhere in here. Oh, this is where he... Uh... A wheelchair motorcycle. Well, Marty's already got one of those. He has, a, he has a hot rod wheelchair. Now he has a wheelchair motorcycle. Yeah, it's totally a motorcycle underneath. Mm-hmm. But... Is it the silver bullet? This is Well, aren't they both a silver bullet? I mm-hmm. think so. Yep. This is the new... Over it's just belching. It's like when exhaust. Coors came out with those God chili it. cans. God damn it! What? They were extra special because it shows you how cool they were. What are you talking about? The silver bullet Coors Light. Like I said at the beginning, I had a joke where I was gonna be like, I really mistook what this title meant. I, you know, I didn't think it meant the wheelchair. I thought it meant and you know, it's supposed to lead towards a actual silver, oh, bullet, actual silver bullet. But I was gonna instead say. Coors Light for some reason, but you immediately said that as soon as I turned the microphone on. <laughs> uh, Can I come up with anything on my own? No, I can't. <laughs> Red gives Marty a bag of fireworks because Marty, the fireworks were canceled. Tells Marty to stick or stay around the house. So he doesn't. But have fun. We had a riding montage too. A what? A little riding montage. Uh, he rode up the road and rode back. Oh yeah, looked extremely dangerous for someone who's already... <laughs> So he climbs down the lattice without using his legs, gets in the... I think he did a better job here. Yeah. Gets in the motorcycle and drives to a bridge to set off the fireworks. Yeah, I just got, like, basically, like, a town park or something. Mm. Um, we get some POV shots from the woods while mm-hmm. Marty's kind of... Do you think... Lighting off some... A little dangerous. Marty, let me... Does Marty know how powerful these things are? No. And, like, no. he's lighting them. He's in a wheelchair. He At least he's over the water. Yes. There's a lot of foliage, though, around... <laughs> The werewolf pops out, and he shoots him in the eye with the rocket. That's hit, man. That's what you gotta stay with the kids, yeah. Marty calls Uncle Red while Uncle Red is falling asleep after apparently getting laid. Mm. You literally just, like, read my line as soon as I look. <laughs> not the whole line, but, like, the first four words right laid. there. You said, Marty calls Uncle Red, and I'm like, I am right on the exact page that you are on right here. <laughs> but he also, so he tells uh, Uncle Red, but he also tells Jane what he believes Who then happening. starts narrating the story randomly. Voice over. Yeah. Again, yeah. yeah the, cause, I don't hate it. Uh, this was from her perspective. So she's collecting... She's, Why? Why? It doesn't you work. you like women. We already went over that last episode. I'm not going to argue that. <laughs> So Fantastic. <laughs> she knows that uh, the werewolf lost an eye, so she's out scouring the town for anybody with an eye patch. Under the guise of picking up cans. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of easy to give that guys. Like, she's not just walking around. When she's in the barber shop, if That's I were those men, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? She was looking for cans. She's, like, staring at them she after the She also, like, pulls that towel, yeah, and the she... guy's like... <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, she wants to know. I know, but it's it's just the lingering... Hey. If your brother came to you and told you that there was a werewolf on the loose and he shot him last night, wouldn't you go check the town? Well, no, she says... Story. Wouldn't you go check the town? <laughs> she says in the narration, I didn't believe him, but I believed him. That's because she had seen enough. She had enough evidence to know that I gotta go check this out finally. Um, did you like the revealing the reveal scene, though? No. You thought it was bad? Mm-hmm. He looks right at us. Uh, he looks yeah, right yeah. at the camera when the she girl goes his back to him for a few seconds yeah. before know, it pans over. Uh, hello, Jane. Mm. Go put the cans in the garage. Da, 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 da. <laughs> um, 
Are you saying there's some sinister music? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's like a fucking Bond villain. Yeah. What? The priest is the werewolf? How okay. clever. <laughs> exactly. We get a mouse scare. And this is the reveal. For you me. wrote my notes! And the mouse scare. Mouse scare for the whole... She couldn't just see the Peacemaker back lying around in there. They had to do a mouse scare so that she falls into cans. Are there other bodies or body parts underneath those cans? Probably. Because she sees the bat there. Could and be a lot of things. That's why it's Doesn't she, so bad she later in there. says, like, it smelled bad in there? Like, it's like a, a layer. Dan, yeah. Let me tell you this, though. Like Beowulf's Dan. Anyways. Or Grendel. Is it Grendel? One of the two. Grendel. <laughs> Grendel? Did you ever went in a cave? That girl, Gina. Ginny. Mm. <laughs> from. Friday the 13th Part 2 <laughs> pissed herself when she saw a mouse. That's true. This girl, at least she kept her cool. Yeah. Jason's trying to kill her, and a mouse makes her piss herself. Yeah. Um, Fantastic movie. I, I started getting a Lost Boys vibe here, where the Reverend knows that they know yeah. what he is, so I'm just going to wait until, kind of like the, the vampires are like, all right, we're coming in. I wouldn't be surprised but then the, Stephen King writing the same shit over and over again. <laughs> so uh, Marty writes a letter. Yeah, go kill yourself. In Unibomber, <laughs> in Unibomber fashion. Yeah. Yeah, he really goes out of his way to, like, cut letters out of magazines to paste. And he, they kept sending letters day after day after day. I think it was, like, four days or something like that. Common Sense paralyzed his brain, too. I have that written down. Common Sense got... got. Oh, Uncle Red says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he says... Your Common Marty. Sense got paralyzed with your legs. I was like, Jesus. That's back when you could be tough on kids. Apparently. Oh, I was going to say something about that. Um, As far as I'm concerned, like parents back then if they acted like gary Busey, you know tough but also like you know nice at the same time maybe that's what people are talking about when they say their parents were good parents and not you know not so much uh i got hit with a wooden spoon because my parents were like which thing will cause the most damage to that ass right so right. gary Busey is like a good parent he's what i would imagine a good parent would be yet he's not a parent but he has a squad uh, with the booze. I still say good Is parent. that a flaw? I <laughs> yeah. see you have a beer in front of you. I don't have a problem with that, Ben. <laughs> uh, well, it was kind of a sad scene. Marty's watching kids Dreaming run around legs. with their legs that work. Is that sad? It was unnecessarily sad. <laughs> sometimes the movie is not that way. Sometimes well, gave, I wish I had a wheelchair so I didn't have to walk so many it places. Gave, it's true. <laughs> it gave reason that Marty was out and the we get the reverend sneaking up behind them basically in the car. ZZ Top? Oh, okay. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, I, I picture this is what priests do. They drive around in cars. And this is common. <laughs> young this is boys. way common. <laughs> he tries to run him off the bridge twice and then he gets stuck. He chases him to a like another, a, bridge. another bridge. Another covered bridge. And he's going to push him into the water, but there's a it, farmer there. Yeah, that was that was pretty well done, though. I was thinking, like, he's out of gas. Like, how, yeah, he's how the fuck is he getting out of this? And Simple. He yells so loud that someone on a tractor can yeah. hear him. Yeah. I've been on tractors that size no. before. You can't hear. <laughs> Plus you that might tractor. Be What's that? Well, in the next movie, we're going to have somebody that hears a phone call from half a mile away outside <laughs> of the house. Yeah. Well, this is the... Rachel. Is that Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. So, <laughs> this is where the Reverend also. Uh, this is basically the R-rated Scooby Doo, the villain. He calls him a <laughs> deadly little shit. <laughs> I would have got away yeah. with it too if it wasn't for that kid in a wheelchair. Uh, and the sheriff has caught word of he obviously believes. Gary Uncle Busey Red told, told him. him. He said you should at least check out the place. Oh, yeah. You don't have to believe he's a werewolf, but so he. Gets killed by going into the werewolf lair at night. And you bludgeon to death. Mm -hmm. Marty takes off a necklace made of silver, and then Jan, Jane. They both give him yeah. both their necklaces. The fuller yeah. the moon, the wolfier he And then gets. we get this like really dramatic scene with a bullet maker. I liked that scene, actually. I liked it. I just felt like it was, an, again, it a was. long movie. That's what I'm saying. But it, it, just... it There were parts that were too dramatic for... The cheese that should have been there. It's yeah, like with you all gotta the pick a tone. Yeah. Go go with this or go with that, but they yep. tried to throw drama into this cheese fest. Um, but I like how the, the gunsmith believes. He's like, or 
A werewolf. Yeah, a werewolf, exactly. There's only two reasons you never have a silver bullet made. But I also like that it was just, uh, it's <laughs> one bullet. That it's not like they made, you know, six. They didn't have enough silver for that. No, but I like that, that it's going to be one shot. It has to be. I think it makes it the end, anticlimactic, but... Yeah, well, yeah, it, why? Cause you know they're gonna hit with that one. Yeah, no, they it missed it's over. Uh, the whole is it? Die, Maybe yeah. they pistol whip him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and I'm not up to date on my how to kill hammer or uh, not hammer, but uh, universal monsters, but uh, werewolves. Can you just shoot them anywhere with a silver bullet? Yes. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be in the heart or anything. No. That's what I thought. It had to be in the heart. It's kind of like a vampire. You got to stake him in the heart. Nope. No? Okay. What about a brain? That for a zombie? Well, apparently. Only? I mean, him. if you hit him, you hit him. But vampires are tricky because light kills them sometimes, too. There's a bunch of shit that kills vampires. Garlic. Almost everything. Running water. Garlic, if you rub it on their face a lot. Silver. Uh, sunlight. Um, fuck. Crosses. Yep. Anything. Voodoo dolls. Literally anything. Well, kills a vampire. Everything. We just named a thousand things. <laughs> oh, where were you? Oh, you were looking at a Reese's Cup egg. Yeah, it's Easter time. It is. Is there only one egg in there, or is there two? There's two, but I already ate one. Wow, that's rude. You didn't even offer us half. Uh-uh. Thank you, Jeebus, for your chocolate eggs. <laughs> All right, so the sheriff gets hit on the head with a bat. That's the one that the bat. Oh, we're past that. We got to the bullet scene. Yep. <laughs> okay. We got to the bullet scene. So Busey sends the parents to a, on a trip. Yep. He says that's a publisher's clearinghouse thing, but it's not. He's just getting them out of there. But he did get a subscription to Popular Mechanics. Because it's the yep. next full moon. Mm-hmm. And Marty feels like something's going to happen because he's the woofiest he's ever been on full moon. He's the woofiest. He, he, said, he literally <laughs> says, the fuller the moon, the woofier he gets, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, the attack scene at the end, uh, Busey gets tossed around that house. Oof, but it does. is kind of anticlimactic. Like, it's very, like... Anti- they drop the drop bullet, the bullet, they get yeah. it out, they shoot yeah. him. That's it. Uh-huh. We all yeah. had those fence, though. How many times you drop a quarter down there, you need it for lunch. Because yeah. you were sitting on it trying <laughs> to get warm before school. <laughs> like, Fuck! Quarter, there was a marble. He's reaching his hand down in there. And everything. Oh, my gone. God! Um, it's Dario or Dario or Gento. But, uh... His ghost does not like our podcast. <laughs> does he? Quit being so fucking sexist, then, ghost. I've never seen Ten Embray. Ten Aubrey. Lots of dead models. Ten Aubrey. Naked dead models? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Naked dead models. Well, naked sure. dead lesbian they... models. Oh, nice. Just... You get to see them naked before they're dead. Oh, you get both, because it's Dario Argento. Yep. He, he did put his sex scene. She was underage, I believe. Ooh, ooh. Yay, Asia. Italy. Asia Argento. Italy. School. Way to go, Italy. So the wolf comes in through the yeah, wall. Red's getting his ass beat. Mm. They drop the bullet down the vent. This is really... There's nothing really to say. Oh. Uh, well, I have a little trivia. Okay. According to Gary Busey, his stunts, he did them all by himself, and he went running and oh jumped, my God. jumped on like a... Because I was like, is that a stuntman? Springboard. No, he claims it was him, and he jumped on some sort of spring-loaded board that Jesus launched Christ. him into walls in class. Wow. <laughs> this is right before you got all fucked up. <laughs> but they get the bullet, and they shoot the werewolf in the eye. Now, just as... I like the hair transforming scenes. It's kind of all right. <laughs> Just, yeah, 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 I didn't that. really like him. Just <laughs> as a pri- just as a priest would have trouble explaining a naked boy on his floor, how do you explain a naked priest on I, your floor? My only thought when this was over was they got a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> I mean, you, the cop, but who are they explaining it to? The cop is dead. Nobody that, cares. That fat sack of shit or whatever they call yeah, it. Is, he probably got promoted to sheriff. This is another trope in uh, 70s and 80s movies that uh, an entire town would be pretty much decimated and nobody gave a shit. Like, well, nobody towns, from the outside That's because they there. weren't looking for sequels in the fucking... Exactly, yeah. They could just these end towns, it like that. Oh, the town's dead. That's also a trope that, uh, especially during this time period, like you said, 70s, 80s, these towns seem like they're completely cut off. There's no other... way around. Yeah. There's, like, there's borders and then there's nothing to the next town. Right. Nothing. And it just, that's not... Yeah, because if the sheriff dies and all these people are dying, there's going to be people in there unless they're in the middle of fucking nowhere. So... You don't have a police department. Okay, so uh, there's one joke left in the movie. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Makes a crappy joke. My legs, they are, they're they pretty messed up. I can't walk. I love it. And then she goes, <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> oh, Marty, you turn, booger. And then we get the final narration, and but why, I don't understand why Marty's not the one telling this story. I don't either. Who cares? It's stupid. I, I feel like he, like, 
passed he away was the from story, his, yeah. like, whatever, his handicap. He was the story. Like, he told the story. He was. You saw it from his perspective, except when the woman was narrating. That's why the narration Who changed. cares who narrated it? Oh it was it matter? Yeah, it was unnecessary. No, it wasn't. All right, fine. All right, Because so... of that narration from a woman, I give it extra points. <laughs> You read him being sexist. So, John, this is a first time watch for you, so you go first. Okay. Gary Busey wasn't as wild as I thought he was going to be. Pre accident. Yeah. But he was he was still, in my opinion, fun. Oh, yeah. And I liked this movie. I liked. Um, what was missing from it? I, we've just said this. The narration pissed me off. Yeah. I thought it was completely well, it was... unnecessary. What's missing from it? I don't know. Suspense of any kind. I, but it. It's not necessarily You're supposed missing to, on a smaller picture. It's not supposed to be a suspenseful boobs. It's not supposed <laughs> supposed to be a suspenseful movie, but it's also not supposed to be entirely funny. But they try to go all kinds of different directions, and I'm never sure what kind of movie they're trying to make. So because of that, and because I wasn't like really entertained, I like the characters, but not really entertained. The pacing was a little weird too. Lots of kills, then nothing for a while. Well, it's also pacing. Or was it the writing? I feel the, like you... The short you, story. You know, it was a short, short Yeah, so story. I've never read it. Cycle of the Werewolf. Cycle of the yep. Werewolf. Which was supposed to be a calendar. It was just going to be... Yeah, like, so they made so many words on that. each page. And it was... That's how you were supposed to read it. That's what it was supposed to be. And then King can't help himself. <laughs> he couldn't help himself from throwing himself into the yeah. next movie we're going to watch either. Like <laughs> fat idiot. All right, anyway, I gave this a 6 out of 10. So... Ben? What, yeah, ben? This movie? what? I'm looking up the director of Phantasm. It's Don Coscarelli. Don Coscarelli. Yeah, Don Coscarelli. Uh, I l- would have loved to have seen what This movie, uh, it was a movie like I grew up watching. It was just a fun, early, like, you know, you're 10, 12 years old watching horror, and you think that this is scary, but it's it's just uh, almost like a fun adventure. But and it's um, R somehow. The Well, I, I think the that. swearing and the, I guess, some of the violence... I was not a fan of the werewolf outfit. It looked almost like a cat. Mm. <laughs> like a panther or something. And Dino, after the fact, has all said that that's what made this movie bad. I was like, well, why didn't you get a new... It's, when it's... you looked at it, you didn't think well, that a... it was going to look that way? Or what? It's, uh, it's known that they started filming the movie before they even had a costume for the werewolf. Oh. Yeah, they didn't have everything that. But um, I, I really enjoyed that they didn't have to... There's no explanation why he's a werewolf. Right. They didn't force why Corey Haynes' character is in a wheelchair. It's just, it is. And I like that. Feeling it. We don't know why he's in a wheelchair, do we? Mm-mm. No, that's why I, I like that. I though. assumed he fell out of a tree. Okay. Sure. <laughs> it's, there's both a lot of cheese in this movie, but there's a couple, There's some creepy scenes in it. It's a good. I, I know that you guys were kind of making fun of the fog machine that they, <laughs> the overuse. <laughs> And we'll see that again at Pet Cemetery. Not as much fog, but... Not condensed in that one little area. Like yeah. That, where enough that a werewolf can be in two <laughs> feet of snow and just smash people down out of it. But I liked it. Um, I, uh, yeah, there were a lot of, I thought, references in this movie. We had Halloween 4 with the, just that bar lynch mob um, swamp thing in the swamp. But uh, the acting wasn't... I thought Corey Ham was pretty good in it. Uh, Everett, Mag- Everett McGill... The priest, I always like him. He's great in my favorite show ever, Twin Peaks. The people under the stairs. He's getting that. Scary. Terry that's O'Quinn. Like a, that's a decent. He's the original stepfather. Wasn't yeah, Terry, Terry O'Quinn. O'Quinn. Yeah. Uh, sure. We didn't even talk about him being no, the stepfather. No, he's he's pretty. Well, we have 1987. We're not, we're not talking about stepfather. Maybe we should. But he was good in it. Uh, Lawrence Tierney, like I said, I watched anything with him in it. And Gary Busey, crazy as ever. Um, but I really hated the narration. Mm. It's just not needed. <laughs> Wasn't needed. What'd you um, get? Because of nostalgia, I'll probably give it up seven. And that's I really was, learned to rate it. That's I'd probably I was, give it up five out of ten. But <laughs> that's I was waiting for to see if you were what you were gonna give it because I knew we would all be around the same thing. Um, I like this movie. It's better than average. It's you have seen fun. it before though, right? I've seen yeah. it before a few times when I was younger and once probably as an adult. But I like Corey Haim. All the movies he's in, there's a little '80s cheese to it with. A few actors you know from the 80s. And it's not great, but it's good. I'm going to meet you guys in the middle and give it a 6.5 out of 10. What was it missing? It was R from the 80s. It was missing, missing titties. titty. There was nobody in there. There was movie, nobody though. in there except for, like, we could have just had one random shot of, like, the 
man and the woman that Jane Bonin. sees earlier that gets pregnant. Maybe at the beginning of the movie, Bonin. Explain to me how my tits are so big if I'm not pregnant. There you go. Wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Start to get a little bit more creative with these. All right, so what? Uh, six, six and a half, and seven. Yeah. Sounds about right. All right. Um, you can find us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com backslash horrorcasting. We're on Twitter at horrorcasting. Uh, you can email the show, horrorcastings at gmail.com. Uh, all our old shows are on YouTube, at least most of them. I think some of them are still on iTunes, but I'm not paying for that shit. So, through me.